call the roll. Allen, Anderson, Bates, Bell, Berryhill, Locke, Canella, De Leon, Fuller, Gaines, Galjoni, Glazer, Hall, Hancock, Hernandez, Hertzberg, Hill, Hueso, Huff, Jackson, Lada, Leno, Leva, Lou, McGuire, Mendoza, Mitchell, Monning, Morlock, Morrell, Wynn, Nielsen, Pan, Pavley, Roth, Runner, Stone, Vidak, Wykowski, Wolk. Colleagues, the secretary notices we are absent a quorum. Would the members please come to the Senate floor for our 9 a.m. session where we have 32 bills on file. Members, please, senators, to the Senate floor to begin our 9 a.m. session. Mr. Secretary, please call the roll. Allen, Anderson, Bates, Bell, Berryhill, Block, Canella, De Leon, Fuller, Gaines, Galjani, Glazer, Hall, Hancock, Hernandez, Hertzberg, Hill, Hueso, Huff, Jackson, Lada, Leno, Leva, Lou, McGuire, Mendoza, Mitchell, Monning, Morlock, Morrell, Wynn, Nielsen, Pan, Pavley, Roth, Runner, Stone, Vidak, Wykowski, Wolk. Colleagues, a quorum is present. Would the members and our guests be on the rail and in the gallery please rise? We will be led in prayer this morning by our guest chaplain, the Reverend Janice Steele from the Loomis Basin Congregational United Church of Christ, otherwise known as LBC UCC. After which, please remain standing. We will be led in the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag by Senator Wykowski. In the words of writer and composer Adele Getty, O oh, great spirit, earth, sun, sky, and sea, you are within and all around me. O oh, great spirit, dawn before the day, stir us within to hear you as we pray. Still speaking, God, we are thankful and grateful for another opportunity to be better human beings and to make a difference in our world. We are grateful to know that all lives matter and all are significant in your sight. We give thanks for those who toil and work within the walls of this chamber to write, review, debate, and vote on legislation that provides sustenance, hope, and calls to action to improve the lives of the people of this great state and nation. 
remind us that our common denominator is our humanity. Remind us that the glass is always half full and not half empty. Empower our leaders to stand on the side of justice and to extend abundant grace to colleagues, constituents, comrades, and confidants. O oh, great spirit, earth, sun, sky, and sea, stir us within to hear you as we pray. Grant wisdom and understanding, courage and perseverance to run and not faint, to walk and not get weary. As the Puritans proclaimed years ago, there is more light, there is always more to know and more to do. During these challenging times, as our leaders face difficult decisions, give them the capacity to expand in vision and direction, to extend the olive branch over and over again. And when the work is done in this lifetime, we pray that we will know without shadows of doubt that we did our best, that we did as the prophet Micah admonished, to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with our God. Blessed be, let it be so. Ashe and amen. Colleagues under privileges of the floor. Are there any privileges of the floor? All right, seeing none. Messages from the governor will be deemed read. Messages from the assembly will be deemed read. Reports of committee will be deemed read and amendments adopted. Under motions, resolutions, and notices. Without objection, the Senate journals for June 1st through June 4th, 2015, will be approved as corrected by the minute clerk. Motions, resolutions, and notices, colleagues. Seeing none, we will go to consideration of the daily file. Second reading file, Mr. Secretary, please read. Senate Bill 681 and Senate Bill 114. Second reading file is deemed read. We are going to go directly, uh, colleagues, to Senate third reading. We are going to start where we left off yesterday and then go back uh, to file item 13. So we are going to start at file item 28. And I will indicate that file item 44, which is SB 128, is going to be taken up at 11 a.m. 11 a.m. for file item 44, but we will start now with file item 28 by Senator Bell. Are you prepared, Senator Bell, to take this up? Mr. Secretary, please read. Senate Bill 12 by Senator Bell, an act relating to foster youth. Senator Bell. Madam President, uh, members, in 2010, uh, I authored AB 12, which extended um, foster care youth benefits uh, from age 18 to age 21. This is the first time in the uh, country's history uh, that we extended the age. Um, with um, Speaker Karen's backs um, uh, leading uh, an effort now at the national level, we hope that this will be a national uh, policy that we have foster care youth benefits to age 21. Youth are, are forced to leave the foster care system at 18 in some cases, and they face significant challenges such as high rates of homelessness, incarceration, low rates of graduation, and currently we have some foster youth who are crossover into the juvenile justice system. Uh, we don't really know that um, uh, there are some kids that uh, 
don't get those benefits to age 21. And they are not receiving the benefits when they exit uh, juvenile hall or the camps. And this is happening uh, because their placement order for extended benefits essentially disappears when they cross over. Um, these children kind of slip through the cracks uh, between the child welfare system and the juvenile delinquency system. Uh, SB 12 allows this population to have uh, their foster care benefits. Um, SB 12 actualizes the intent of AB 12, ensure that no foster youth is left behind. Uh, this, pill, this bill has unanimous support and bipartisan support. Um, respectfully, I sure I vote on this bill. Debate or discussion? Is there any debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none, Mr. Secretary, please call the roll. Allen? I. Anderson? I. Bates? I. Bell? I. Berryhill? I. Block? I. Canella? I. De Leon? Fuller? Gaines? I. Galgioni? Glazer? Hall? Hancock? Hernandez, Hertzberg, Hill, I. Hueso, I. Huff, I. Jackson, I. I. Lada, Leno, I. Leva, I. Lou, I. McGuire, I. Mendoza, I. Mitchell, I. Monning, I. Morlock, I. Morrell, Wynn, I. Nelson, Pan, Aye. I Pavley, Roth, I Runner, I Stone, I Vidak, I Wykowski, I Walk. Walk I. Please call the absent members. De Leon, Fuller, I Galjani, I Glazer, I Hall, Hancock, Hernandez, I Hertzberg. Lada, Morell, I, Nilsson, Pavley. One more time, please call the absent members. One more time, members to the Senate floor, please. De Leon, Hall, Hancock, Hertzberg, Lada, Nilsson, Pavley. Ayes 33, no zero, the measure passes. File item 29, Senator Roth. Madam President. Amendments are pending. Madam. Thank you. Uh, file item 30, Senator Gaines. Not at his desk. File item 31, Senator, Senator. I'm sorry, Senator Gaines. File item 30, Mr. Secretary, please read. Senate Bill 231 by Senator Gaines, an act relating to transportation and making an appropriation therefore. Senator Gaines. Thank you very much, uh, Madam President and members. Uh, I am here to, today to present Senate Bill 231. The Tahoe Basin is a popular recreation destination that must accommodate up to 350,000 visitors on a peak day, in addition to its permanent residency. Currently, the Tahoe Transportation District is embarking on a ferry project to provide a new north-south transit within the basin. This bill will also allow waterborne transit, such as ferries, to be eligible for allocation of certain community funding. This will allow projects such as the Tahoe Basin's newest ferry, Endeavor, to receive funding. This bill has received no, no votes, and I respectfully urge an I vote. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Gaines. Is there any debate or discussion on this item? Any debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none, Mr. Secretary, please call the roll. Allen? I. Anderson? I. Bates? I. Bell? I. Berryhill? I. Block? I. Canella? I. De Leon? Fuller? I. Gaines? I. Galgioni? I. Glazer? I. Hall? I. Hancock? Hernandez? I. Hertzberg? Hill? I. Hueso? Huff? I. Jackson? I Lada, Leno, I Leva, I Lou, I McGuire, I Mendoza, I Mitchell, Monning, Morlock, I Morell, 
Aye. Aye, Wynn. Aye. Aye, Nielsen. Pan. Aye. Aye, Pavley. Roth. Aye, Aye Runner. Aye. Aye, Stone. Aye, Vidak. Aye. Aye, Wykowski. Aye, Aye Wolk. Wolk, aye. Please call the absent members. De Leon. Hancock. Aye. aye Hertzberg. Hueso. Aye. Aye. Lada. Mitchell. Monning. Aye. Nielsen. Pavley. Ayes 34. No zero. The measure passes. File item 31. Senator Allen, Mr. Secretary, please read. Senate Bill 254 by Senator Allen, an act relating to state highways. Senator Allen. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, this bill has to do with state highway relinquishment. Governor Brown's January budget summary outlined the need for legislation to, quote, broaden and streamline the process for the relinquishment of state highways to local jurisdictions. Uh, I happen to have two uh, state highways that go through my district that are kind of like the main streets of their cities. Highway 2 and Highway 1, that has, uh, and there have been some challenges in the relationship between Caltrans and, and my local cities, and I know that a number of you are in the same situation. Uh, now, both Senate and Assembly budget subcommittees expressed the desire to see this proposal in a standalone bill that goes through the, the regular legislative process instead of being folded into a budget trailer. Uh, this bill does just that, incorporating the governor's proposal into a bill that largely mirrors language uh, released by the Department of Finance. Uh, as the bill moves forward, I expect and welcome the opportunity to engage with stakeholders to balance the unique controls, the concerns of both state and local governments. The bill has received unanimous support thus far, including from the League of California Cities. And uh, I am absolutely committed to working closely with the locals on this. This is a measure that I uh, hope will be very helpful for local cities, and I will certainly not move forward. With, there were some couple changes made in appropriations uh, that, uh, that we need to work through as, if the bill moves forward to the assembly to make sure that this is something that is going to help our local cities. And so I'm absolutely committed to working with them to make this work. The bill does not have any opposition, and I respectfully request your I vote. Thank you, Senator Allen. Any debate or discussion? Senator Stone. Thank you, Madam President. I wanted to compliment my, my colleague from, from Los Angeles. As a, a local elected official in the city of Temecula, we had Highway 79 coming through the city, and we felt it was better for have local control over these roads and coordinating signals and, and reducing uh, gas emissions. And so it was a lengthy legislative process for our former Senator Dennis Hollingsworth, who many of you work with, to get that bill passed in the legislature and allow that local control to happen. We better maintain these roads. And the best thing for the state of California is it comes at the expense and, uh, and maintenance by the cities that voluntarily stepped up to the plate. Uh, which improved uh, circulation and the quality of life of our residents. So I applaud the senator. It's going to make it easier for local jurisdictions to take uh, ownership of those state highways coming through their cities. Thank you, sir, for bringing that forward. Thank Eric you, Senator. Vote. Excuse me. Thank you, Senator Stone. Senator Wykowski. Madam President, I rise also in support of the measure. My county, Alameda, had some concerns with the legislation. They've, re they've received assurances by the uh, uh, author as he proceeds in the assembly that they'll work out that. So truly, it's not the state dumping their uh, bad highways onto the locals. There's, it's, a, it's a partnership, and I urge a I vote. Thank you, Senator Wykowski. Um, Senator Allen? Uh, Respectfully ask for an I vote. Very good. Mr. Secretary, all debate having ceased, please call the roll. Allen? Aye. Anderson? Bates? Bell? Bates, aye. Bell, aye. Berryhill? Aye. Block? Aye. aye Canella? I De Leon, Fuller, De Leon I Fuller, I Gaines, I Galgioni, I Glazer, I Hall, I Hancock, I Hernandez, I Hertzberg, Hill, Hueso, I Huff, I Jackson, I I Lada, Leno, I Leva, I Lou, I McGuire, I Mendoza. I Mitchell, I Monning, I Morlock, I Morrell, I Wynn, I Nielsen, Pan, I Pavley, I Roth, I Runner, Stone, I Vidak, I Wykowski, I Wolk. 
Wilk, aye. Please call the absent members. Anderson. Aye. Aye. Hertzberg. Hill. Aye. Aye. Lada. Nielsen. Runner. Ayes 36, no zero. The measure carries. File item 32, Senator Bates. Mr. Secretary, please read. Senate Bill 257 by Senator Bates, an act relating to license plates. Senator Bates. Thank you, Madam President and members. Senate Bill 257 is a simple, straightforward bill that authorizes the personalization of Gold Star family license plates with an optional fee paid for by family members. When California enacted the Gold Star Family License Plate Program, it joined 45 other states uh, in an effort to help mourning families memorialize their fallen heroes. However, these license plates are only issued in sequential series in California. Restricting this special recognition of sacrifice and honor to a sequential series is not only arbitrary, it goes against current California law, which authorizes specialized license plates to be personalized by the owner of the vehicle. Amendments were taken in the Appropriations Committee to help relieve some of the upfront implementation costs for uh, DMV. Col Gold Star families will now have the option of personalization by paying the initial $48 personalization fee, and now they will also pay the specified environmental fees similar to fees paid, by, paid for by other personalized plate programs. Additionally, the bill was amended by the committee to allow DMV more time specifically six additional months to configure the programming details, and therefore the bill will now go into effect on July 1st, 2016. I do believe that it is worth every penny given that these veterans gave the ultimate sacrifice and their families deserve to inscribe the license plates with the personalization they prefer. SB 257 removes the current limitation and will allow families to personalize their Gold Star family license plates if they so choose to pay the optional fee associated. The bill has received no, no votes to date and it is supported by the many veterans groups throughout California. I respectfully ask for an aye vote. Thank you, Senator Bates. Is there a debate or discussion? Senator Nielsen, do you have your microphone up? Thank you, sir. Uh, any, any debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none, Mr. Secretary, please call the roll. Allen? Aye. aye Anderson? Aye, Bates. Aye, Bell. Aye, Berryhill. Aye, Block. Aye, Canella. Aye, De Leon. Aye, Fuller. Aye, Gaines. Aye, Galgioni. Aye, Glazer. Hall. Aye, Hancock. Aye, Hernandez. Aye, Hertzberg. Aye, Hill. Aye, Hueso. Aye, Huff. I Jackson, I I Lada, I Leno, I Leba, I Lou, I McGuire, I Mendoza, I Mitchell, I Monning, I Morlock, I Morell, I Win, Nilsson, I Pan, I Pavley, I Roth, I Runner, I. Stone, I Vidak, I Wachowski, Walk, Walk I. Please call the absent members. Glazer, I. Win, I Wachowski, I. Eyes forty, no zero. The measure passes. File item thirty three. Senator Allen, do you wish to proceed on this item? File item 33. Mr. Secretary, please read. Senate Bill 460 by Senator Allen, an act relating to pupils. Senator Allen. Thank you so much. Uh, give me one second. But we'll give you a second. We just. Okay. So this right. bill. This. So this bill seeks to address a current problem in the way that we finance our students under the local control funding formula. Now, as everyone knows, we give extra, there's a baseline grant given to school districts per pupil, but there is additional funding given to both students from special categories and also schools that have high concentrations of students in those special categories. What are those special categories? Foster care students. Uh, 
low, so low income, social economically disadvantaged students, and English language learners. Now, of those three categories, the only category that students typically move out of during their period of time as a student is the English language learner category. People come, they hopefully go through a really strong ELL program and prepare themselves to enter into mainstream classrooms. Now, the problem is that our current financing system disincentivizes the mainstreaming of those students by not providing, uh, by, by, by immediately cutting off that funding for school districts when they are reclassified as a mainstream language learner rather than in the ELL program. So what this bill simply does is extend out by two years after the mainstreaming of a student, the LCFF funding for those students so as to provide a longer uh, runway for those students and school districts that will allow them to, uh, to, 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 to ease that transition toward mainstream, mainstream instruction within the school system. So it addresses this current disincentive that exists in school financing law. Uh, we receive very strong support uh, in committee from both sides of the aisle, and I respectfully ask for your aye vote. Thank you, Senator Allen. Any debate or discussion on this item? Any debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none, is there any objection to substituting a unanimous roll call? Seeing and hearing none, ayes 40, no zero. The measure passes. File item 34, Senator Pan. Mr. Secretary, please read. Senate Bill 573 by Senator Pan and Acrolink State Government. Senator Pan. Thank you, Madam President, members. SB 573 is an innovative measure that will improve our state's transparency and accountability, improve efficiency and cost savings all across all state agencies, and foster innovative economic development. SB 573 will do this by establishing a chief data officer who will create a robust statewide open data portal to publicize and centralize data sets in collaboration with our state agencies. This will increase government efficiency by approving processes that require cross-agency participation. State agencies will reduce workloads, which can increase cost savings. For example, if the annual operating costs of the California Department of Conservation were reduced by just 2% through open data policies, this single agency could save the state nearly $2 million a year. Across all agencies, California could save about $80 million a year on reduced costs from compliance with public record requests alone. A statewide data portal can generate billions in economic development. California is the global center of the open data business movement and home to 133 open data companies who use open data to generate new businesses, develop new products and services, create hundreds of thousands of jobs across California. This includes Yelp, Zillow, ESRI, Realtor.com, and Google Maps. California-based companies like Climate Corp, an agricultural analytics startup from San Francisco, built by accessing newly published soil data and combining it with existing weather data. As a result, Climate Corp pioneered a valuable agricultural prediction tool which, and sold, sold for $990 million. Finally, open data promotes civic engagement. For example, governments have used open data to get feedback on public sector programs, such as participatory budgetary efforts that better involve citizens in the process. Currently, 10 states and the, both the cities of San Francisco and Los Angeles have established open data portals. San Francisco's access to real-time transit information has, has resulted in a decrease in 311 call volume, saving the city over a million a year. And in Los Angeles, Open government data allowed the Newton Division to develop technology that reduced gun-related homicides by 22.6% a month. In addition, the California Health and Human Services Department and the State Controller's Office have established their own data portal. However, as more agencies and cities establish their own portals, the state will have a fragmented open data system that may create confusion, lack uniform transparency, may ultimately hinder our state instead of help it. A chief data officer to work with agencies to help standardize state data policies and index the millions of records that we currently have access to and centralize more data while ensuring security. Let me just clarify that the chief data officer is very different from a chief technology officer in the California Department of Technology. Let's not confuse the two. Caltech, or the California Department of Technology, is responsible for software, hardware, and information systems 
a chief data officer is responsible for managing and publicizing data that our agencies produce, which may include obesity and diabetes rates that the Department of Health collects and can help us develop innovative and preventive health tools and many other tools as well. I specifically ask for an I vote. Thank you, Senator Penn. Senator Hertzberg, under debate and discussion. Yeah, rise in support of this measure. You know, this whole issue of data has transformed our lives. When I was here yesterday trying to figure out how to pronounce the Latin up there, Bernie went on Google and, and, and showed me how to, how, to, how to pronounce it. Each of us, every day, the stories in our lives, the access of information has been nothing less than extraordinary in transforming our lives and transforming California's economy. The question is, how does it interface with government? We've got to figure that out. It's a really big deal. I would suggest that probably one of the biggest areas, I used to serve on the board of the Public Policy Institute of California, and the researchers always would have a hard time getting access to data to determine whether our government programs are working in foster care, in health, just to be able to get the raw data and to apply their imagination and their intellect to the process. How do we do that? How do we protect privacy for folks and, and the like? How do we protect jobs that we just don't wholesale replace everything with a computer. There are really big issues here. Uh, Assemblymember Mainshine used to work with the United Way and was elegant in dealing with the homeless issues and figuring out how to track data and whether we were being effective. So as we, we have got to be forward thinking. We've talked about yesterday in the energy space, we've talked about it in other areas, but this is a much larger dynamic, and I think that Senator Pan's measure is a reasonable way to begin to try to, in a strategic manner, focus on how we can get access to this, to this stuff. And I think as a legislative branch, it could be extremely helpful because quite frankly, we pass programs all the time that inspire us, that look good on the surface, and we just don't know whether they work. And getting access to this data and allowing folks to figure it out and to manipulate it in a way, I think gives that level of intellectual rigor to the process and makes the government better. I suggest that we vote on this measure. Well, Thank you, uh, Senator Hertzberg. Any further debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none, Mr. Secretary, please call the roll. Allen? Anderson? No. no Bates? No. no Bell? I Berryhill, Block, I Canella, I De Leon, Fuller, No Gaines, I Galjoni, I Glazer, I Hall, I Hancock, I Hernandez, I Hertzberg, I Hill, I Wesso, I Huff, I Jackson, I Lada, I Leno, I Leva. I, Lou, I, McGuire, I, Mendoza, I, Mitchell, Monning, Morlock, Morell, No, Wynn, No, Nielsen, No, Pan, I, Pavley, Roth, I, Runner, No, Stone, No, Vidak, no, Wachowski. I walk. Walk, I. Please call the absent members. Allen. Aye. I. Berryhill. No. De Leon. I. Mitchell. I. Monning. Morlock. No. Pavley. Pavley, I. Please call the absent members. Monning. Ayes 28, noes 11, the measure passes. File item 35.